What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Faye. And if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, so, y'all, I am coming to y'all with the updated PCT video. Um, I'm sorry that it's been so long, but with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so let's just start off. I've seen that y'all had some questions about interviews. Um, before we even get into the interviews, let me say... Uh, I apply with this company. It's kind of hard to get in touch with them, but once you are able to get HR's number, I honestly just say keep calling them because they got a lot of other things that they got going on through that, throughout the company as well. So I just kept calling them, hounding them about my interview. Um, and so once they be like, oh, okay, cool. Your application has been accepted, Blase. Uh, you go through two stages of interviews. One is the phone interview and one is in person. So your phone interview is just your basic stuff. They just want to talk to you, you know, try to kind of feel you out. Um, in the, unfortunately for me, when I end up doing uh, my interview in person, so my regional manager is Molly. And so I end up having to meet with Molly and then all of, her clinic managers. So literally every manager in this range is there besides the one that I'm going to work for. So it was like, yay, woo, sunshine. No, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> um, so I sat and you know what? I left a really good impression on everybody. I told them like, yes, I'm 20. I am in college. I have goals and, and dreams, you know. Um, you know, dialysis is kind of something that I I know of a little bit, but I didn't know too much. Um, but I was I was willing to learn. I have a passion for helping people. Um, and that's the main thing is having a passion to help. Because you got to think about it. When you do get patients, you're going to have these patients for three, four hours at a time for three days a week like you're going to grow a bond with your patients so you need to make sure that you have a caring heart because we have some people that just that are able to do for themselves and some that got to get that extra little oomph um but that should not stop you from applying or you know doing your job or treating people wrong because of you know their status but like i said it's all about how you care about people um, sorry, y'all. I'm kind of looking at my notebook just so I don't forget anything. Um, once you get the job, so once you get the job, there is a training. So what I realized due to everybody that commented on my last video, so trainings are different depending on where you're at. Um, I'm located in Louisville, Kentucky. So I my trainings are 13 weeks long. So... You train for 13 weeks inside of class, outside of class, on the clinic floor and things. Um, and then once your 13 weeks are up, you know, your uh, the educators come out to your clinic. They see you off, make sure you're doing everything that you got to do. Uh, and then you take a test and then you're finally certified. Um, you still got to go through CPR training and all that good stuff. Like you got to get certified through the board of nursing, wherever you're at. Um, so, you know, that's why it's, it's a longer process, but they also want to make sure that you're comfortable enough to be able to handle a pod of four. And when I say a pod of four, it means you get four patients. Uh, I work at a bigger clinic, so we have 24 chairs. Other clinics might have 12, 16, but we have a bigger clinic. Um, and you know, you gotta... We like we are a big clinic, so that means we have three shifts. So I'm flipping pods all day. Um, you just gotta get comfortable in your own routine. Um, you gotta, you know, all I can say is really what you learn from your preceptor and the other people around you is just listen to their tricks and tips of what they got to give you, and you know, just make it into your own routine while still following policy. Um. Honestly, uh, I had a few concerns about dialysis because um, I during training, I it, this was new. Let me just say it like that. This whole experience was so new. It was crazy. Um, I never seen myself in the medical field. And then my thing is, is 
I'm scared of blood, scared of needles. And it's like, girl, it's all you work with. It's all you do. <laughs> and so, you know, it was a scarier kind of process. I flipped out the first time that I actually had to stick somebody. But then once I got better at it, I was excited because we have some hard sticks. So once I was able to boop, pop them on in there, you know what? Them is big accomplishments for me. Um, With this job, you just have to be willing to learn. You have to, you know, realize what's going to work for you, what's not going to work, how you want to maintain, like, manage your time properly. I'm still learning that myself. Um, it's a, being on the floor while in training and being on the floor when you're out of training is too different. Uh, because while you're in training, you have somebody that's willing to help you. Um, realize, <laughs> sorry, y'all, you're going to hate me for this, but... What I've realized is, yo, you're here to learn. Do not give your preceptors hell because at the end of the day, they are still there to do their job. They are still there to flip that pod. They're still there to get their patients on and out. Like, realize you got to be a help. Do not stress your preceptor out. If you don't understand something, then that's cool. That's a whole different ball game. As long as you're showing interest in trying to learn and applying yourself, your preceptor will not be angry. Um, just, you don't have to be, you don't have to be their assistant. You don't have to go out and get them food. You don't have to go out and do certain stuff for them. You don't got to go buy them nothing. Um, now, like I said, they're, they're getting paid to train you. So, listen to what they got to say. But... Also, realize you don't have to be anybody's assistant, okay? Um, co-workers. I see the co-workers was one of the things. Um, when asking for help, it's never bad. You know, you can always ask for help. Um, but as you get in your clinic, you can start to, re like, learn people, see what they're about. Oh, well, if I ask this person, are they going to ask me to go do 12 other things in the, uh, in the return of this favor? You have to realize that because you might need somebody just to stick you. Well, to stick your patient because you had trouble with it. And now they're like, oh, well, I need you to wrench so-and-so back. Can you go call this person back and pull these needles? And it's like, dang, you getting stuck with all these extra tasks when all you needed was somebody to come stick somebody. So I say, honestly, yo, get into your own routine. Learn how to handle things. Try to problem solve your own situations before you call somebody. If you really feel like, oh, no, I'm hurting my patient or, you know, this just doesn't feel right, then go call on help. Everybody is not going to do you bad. Everybody ain't going to be like, oh, nah, sis, mm -mm, or ignore you because they can't. I mean, come on now. Nobody wants to mess up everybody's rotation. You feel me? So at, if you really need to ask for that help, realize you can say no. You can say no to doing a lot of other tasks if it is not, you know, if it if it's doing too much or you're in the process of trying to do one thing, you can always tell them no. Or you can go call on somebody else like, hey, do you mind helping me? Like my clinic, they don't mind helping one another because it, yo, the sooner we get them in, the sooner we get them out. They have lives, you know, so we try not to hold them up. Um, while in the clinic, you will most likely deal with some situations where you and your coworkers get into it. Um, and honestly, it's life. You're not going to get along with everybody that you meet. Um, honestly, but you can't, don't worry about it because look, you are here to get your bag. You are here to get that money. You're here to get that moolah. Okay. <laughs> but you do not. Yo, you do not got to go out of your way to talk to people. No, none of it. As long as you're making sure that your patience is filling you, you're doing your job correctly. Bro, if people have stank attitudes, you are not obligated to deal with it. You are at work, okay? People's moods should not be able to affect your bag while you're at work. I know we all have our days, and you know what? And it's okay. It's okay. Because, honestly, if you was to go in and be like, you know what? you know, Y'all, I ain't really feeling today. 
It's cool, though. I'm going to get back in a better mood. Speak a little positivity into the world, you know? Um, You don't have to talk to people if you feel like people got a stink attitude with you. Avoid them. Just because you're in the same clinic does not mean you have to talk to them. It does not mean that you really have to avoid them. If you feel like you're in, in danger or it's or these people are causing you to not be able to work efficiently, then you can always put in for a request to go somewhere else. Or anything. Um, but other than that, yo, don't worry about nobody. Get your check. Worry about your patience. That's it. Um, so, for me, for me, like I said, my, my experience was crazy. I've cried a lot. Um, this job is level in, uh, entry level. So, of course, I didn't have any experience in the medical field. I kind of just was winging it going on about it um in dallas this is a different type of field it's not just your regular nursing's assistant no none of that like it, it's different it's really different um i've cried i've cried plenty of times like i shed too many tears <laughs> like there was a day that i forgot how to set up a machine how do you forget up how to set a machine? So it's like, it's only two cords of dialyzer and some saline. But you know, look, you can get frustrated. Sometimes you can overthink things. Once again, key point, make sure you learn how to do things your way that works best for you while still following policy. Policy, policy, policy. It's always, okay, get it in your minds. Policy, policy, policy. You have to follow policy. If not, that's your job. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, my Some of the biggest goals that you can accomplish while in this field, you need to go ahead and get your CCHT. I am currently being a procrastinator because I have my CCHT papers and still in call. But most likely after this video, I'm going to call them. <laughs> but um, instead of my testing date. Get your CCHT. Once you get your CCHT, you will be completely certified. If you want to be a traveling tech, you can. You can do that. Do that ish. Do it. <laughs> um, and man, once you get your CCHT, you get a bonus. And then honestly, you get a raise every six months. And that's not even including like if you get your annual little review and you're doing good, yo, what I realized, if you calling in work without a doctor's notes or having sick, like sick days, anything's calling in, if they are not excused, man, they will go against you when it comes to getting that raise. Uh, and bro, you don't even want to do all that. You don't even want to do all that. Um, once you're comfortable enough in your clinic, you can always volunteer yourself to go to other clinics. You get paid mileage. So that means wherever you're at, like your home, not your home clinic, but your house, like your literal house. <laughs> From there to the other clinic that you're going to, you can get paid for that. You can get paid for those mileage, um, those mileage points or whatever, blase. I hope I just said that right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but um, they calculate the distance from your clinic to that clinic. How far is it from your house to each one? All that good stuff. Um, and you get paid for it. And honestly, I have been to a few different clinics. And I cannot complain about them. I, I can't be mad. Like I said, I'm in a big clinic. So I'm constantly ripping and running, moving back and forth. And when you go to other clinics, it's like, hmm, all right, so I'm the help. I am here to do whatever y'all really need me to do, but know your grounds. Like I said, don't, if you are at somebody else's clinic, do not close because you are not supposed to. I don't care if you're the closer at your clinic, if you're the opener at your clinic, if you are going somewhere to help, you do not open and you do not close, period, period period <laughs> uh biggest thing look just run up at run up your check okay this field right here bro 
you can make some good money. I'm level entry and I, I'm doing pretty well for myself, honestly. Um, like I said, you get raises. You like, bro. The be the better you do, the more money you can get. Um, and no, it's not all about money, not at all. But let's realize the money money is what makes the world go round. So you wouldn't do any kind of job if you wasn't getting paid. So worry about that. Uh, man, biggest tips, get cool with your bosses. Um, work with them because if you work with them, they will work for you. You know, scratch my back. I'm going to scratch yours. Um, yo, just like I said, don't, don't let people stress you out at work. Be open to learn, get your check, and bro, get your CCHT. Get your CCHT. Period. Go get it. Go get it. That's your money man right there. It is certified, like, bruh, you're already going to be certified through the board, like the nursing's board. But with your CCHT, now you can go anywhere. And it's like, who don't want that? Travel and tech. Send me to Chicago. Pay for my hotel. Who got me a flight in the morning? I need all that, you know? I need all that. So, <laughs> I hope that this video was useful. Um, thank y'all so much. Go ahead and, like I said, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Yo, if y'all are feeling my braids, y'all should go ahead and drop some heart eyes in them comments because my braids is my power style and I feel like a baddie. I'm sorry. That's why I keep flipping my hair back and forth. <laughs> but y'all, I hope y'all have a good day and I see y'all soon.